Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make houseplant videos here on Good and Planty. If you just happen to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. Today I want to jump in and talk about when to repot your plants. I have three examples ranging from very clearly does not need to be repotted to a very, very extreme case of needing to be repotted. And I'm hoping that those visuals help you decide whether or not it is time to repot your plant. And we will also be repotting the extreme case today because I need to get that done. So if that sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned because we're just gonna jump right into it. So the first example I have is this Peperomia burgundy ripple, got soil everywhere. <laughs> this is my example of a plant that does not need to currently be repotted. A, the foliage is healthy. As you can see, that's always a good sign. And then the other very obvious sign is that if I look under the pot here at the drainage hole, I don't have roots overflowing and creeping out. Just from the looks of it, I can tell that this plant has not outgrown its pot. Oh, I have a, <laughs> I guess it wasn't that happy after all. The other reason I am pretty content with this plant is because the water is running through the soil at a good pace. So if the water is draining through your soil way too fast, you can barely even water this plant without the saucer filling up. You either have a plant where its root system is taking over the pot, so there is no soil to absorb that water, which is why it's running really fast through, or it might not have overgrown the plant pot, you might just have a soil that drains a little bit too well. So go ahead and add some more, um, either the store-bought soil or your uh, cocoa peat back in. Again, this is an example of a happy plant. Peperomia also in general have pretty small and thin root systems. They take a bit longer to outgrow their pots. Besides the visuals, also knowing your plant and their growth rate and what their root system looks like also kind of helps indicate whether or not they are going to outgrow their pot fast. Now example number two, this is a moderate case. I am not rushing to repot this plant even though it could probably benefit from it. This is a Syngonium. I'm not 100% sure on the variety, but it is a Syngonium. It is a bit leggy towards the bottom. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> that I won't jump into this video. But basically I do have some dying foliage, so I can tell that she's like a little bit grumpy about something, you know? So that's a little bit of an indicator that maybe I should look underneath the pot. And then when I do, I do see some roots starting to creep out of the drainage hole and it's very like, overcrowded here and you know, you can see it. The water does run through this pot a little bit quickly, nothing too crazy. And I would say that it is a good time to repot this plant. I just don't have the right pot size for it. Otherwise I would also be repotting this plant today. I feel like this is typically what I let my plants get to before I repot. So I wouldn't repot it any sooner than this, but now that she does look like this, I want to go ahead and repot. I am just being a bad plant parent right now. <laughs> Also, I'm sure that some of you are wondering, you know, what is the right time to repot? At the time of filming this video, it is like early October. I don't even know what day it is. Yeah, it's early October. You know, some people don't like to repot into the late fall slash winter. Personally, if my plant really needs it, I don't care what time of year it is, I'm gonna go ahead and repot it. But ideally, you wanna start in like early spring and early summer to do the majority of your repotting. However, I do find that a lot of my plants have a pretty significant growth spurt during the summer. So then towards the end of summer, early fall, I have a lot of plants that need to be repotted again, even though I do repotting in the spring. I am not like super particular about that and I don't think you need to be either. That's just my personal opinion on it. Now <laughs> I have a pretty extreme case of a plant that so clearly needs to be repotted that it is declining. And it actually prompted me to make this video because I thought that these visuals would kind of help really lay out what to look for. For the last plant, I have this Schifflera arboricola. She looks okay up here, 
But then I have all of this. So literally when she's in her terracotta pot and in her, ooh, I'm hitting the mic, I'm so sorry. When she is in her pot, you can see the roots actually growing over the edge of the saucer and starting to trail out. It is pretty extreme towards the bottom. You can see how long these roots are. They are sticking to the bottom of the pot. And then on top of that, if you look in the top of the soil, you can actually see roots starting to poke out as well. Here is some, let me try to get closer. Here is some, you can see, they look like little, some of them have kind of died off. Let's see, here's another one. So when the roots are starting to grow so much out the bottom and actually come out of the top, that is a very strong indicator that your plant needs to be repotted. On top of that, I have absolutely no new growth happening. I have like a few little babies here and there, but nothing significant because this plant has, it just knows that it can't grow anymore, <laughs> basically. This is a very extreme case. It is not good for the plant at all. Even if plants like to be root bound, like some philodendron do, for example, this is too much. Absolutely, this plant needs to be repotted. I am bad for this. And we are gonna go ahead and repot this plant today because she definitely needs it. I'm gonna go ahead, set up, and I will see you on the floor. All right, so we are on the floor now, and as per usual, I'm struggling with the angle, but I have this pot, I wanna say is eight inches. This is a six inch, so we're bumping it up like about a size. That's typically what I recommend for most plants, go up a pot size to max. Six to eight is perfect, and now I'm gonna take my soil mixture. I have a video on how I make my own soil on my channel already, so I will link that up above in the cards if you wanna go ahead and watch it. I'm gonna take this and just put in a few, like two or three inches of a base. That looks pretty good and kind of like make a little bit of a hole. So it should look something like this. Hopefully you can see like a few inches of soil in there and then you can go ahead and like, kind of like make a little hole in the center. Then I'm gonna gently like shimmy out this plant, but let's see how it goes because it's so overgrown. Yeah, there we go. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, you can see just how overgrown this plant was. You can see its roots all around. And you can also see how the perlite really floats to the top. So that is why I switched to pumice because this was a perlite mixture. It was one of the older mixtures I used and all of the perlite eventually floated to the top. So because it's so much lighter than the rest of the soil mixtures, I'm just gonna slowly like loosen up some of that top bit to get the perlite back down. And I am introducing pumice, which is heavier than perlite, so it'll stay in the soil mixture longer. I'm not gonna uh, over break up the roots. I don't think I have to do anything crazy. I'm just gonna gently massage the bottom a little bit to encourage the roots to kind of grow out, but I don't have to over disturb this plant. I'm gonna plop it in, in the center. And then, oh my God, you can see all of the, the root patterns on the rim of this pot. I don't know how well you can see it, but I can see the imprints of all of the roots just clinging. So she's in the center of the pot and now we have to backfill to fill up the edges there. I'm gonna take a scoop. And put like a scoop on each side and slowly fill up the pot. And when you pack it down, you want it to be pretty firm, but you don't want to 
cram it too hard down otherwise there's gonna be not enough room for like air and water flow so I think that's gonna be pretty good I'm gonna hit it to get rid of any major air pockets I do have a few roots that are poking out on the top and honestly there's not all that much I can do about it since that's where they're growing now because I messed it up. So I'm going to put like a little bit of a heavier top than normal just to cover them a little bit, but it probably won't be all that perfect. So there we go. Pat it down. Give it another pat. And there she is. She's all done in her little eight inch. I think she looks great. Her saucer is somewhere, but she's pretty much done. <laughs> I'm so happy she looks amazing and there's no roots on the bottom thank god and you can see that there's a little bit of root poking out of the top I don't even know if you can see it but it's not the end of the world and hopefully it just grows back down now that there's actually room all right and that's gonna be it for today's video thank you all so much for watching I think that she came out great. I hope you all learned a little something about when to repot your plants. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down below in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. Please subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and you wanna see more planty content from me. I'm also now offering memberships if you wanna receive exclusive bonus content and free plant consultations. Go ahead and check that out down below. There's also a bunch of other stuff in my description box. So go ahead and take a peek. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Huge thank you to all of my members. Thank you to O'Neill, Val, Celine, Audrey, Lacey, Heather, underscore B, Jacqueline, Linda, Michaela, Brooke, and Laura. You are all the best. Thank you all so much for being members and I will see you in the next video.